Hmm, what have we got here? Let's zoom out. Ah, excellent. I hope you're having a good Sunday on the Sun yourself. Let's go from pixels to pointillism to point clouds. Hello! We're going to talk about LiDAR and Unreal this morning. I'm Sean Foster, and we're going to cover three main points. In this video, we're going to talk about plugin and file prep. We're going to spend the bulk of our time talking about a lot of different ways you can visualize LiDAR data in Unreal, including iDome lighting. And then finally, we're going to talk about how performance works inside of the Unreal with LiDAR. So let's jump in and get started. All right, we're in Unreal and it's looking a lot like that Surat painting again. Let's quickly turn on the plugin and then we'll prep this file. So under settings, plugins, type in LiDAR, just check this on. If, as long as you're using Unreal 4.25 and higher, you should be good to go. It's included in the files. Um, also, I just want to quickly point out under project settings, we've got some additional LiDAR commands that we will talk a little bit about in another video. Now I've brought this file in already, but importing LiDAR files is pretty simple. Just go under file, import. Um, I brought in this house.laz. I'm using Unreal 4.27. LAZ is pretty similar to the LAS file type that I mentioned in the previous video. It's a binary file. LAZ is slightly more preferred because it's got better compression, but uh, in Unreal, it's just been added as a, an acceptable file type for Unreal 4.27 and higher. Brought that in. Also, right now, I dialed down the number of points streamed to do this recording. So we can turn that up in a second, but I'm just going to select the point cloud. I'll hit Control B to select it in the browser and Control E to open up the editor. So here's the point cloud. We can take a look at the settings. Here's the point cloud total. It's uh, got over 2 million points and there's just the nodes and also the collision here. The collision is one of the things you might want to set up. So it's set in uh, centimeters and the lower the value that you dial in, the more costly it'll be. So um, here's the collision settings right here. You can click build collision and test that out. In another video, I'm going to talk about um, editing point clouds and then also possibly, you know, setting the the center point connected to GPS settings. But for now, this is where we're going to leave this. We'll go quickly back into the Unreal file. I can run a console command and just make the number of points a little bit higher. So if you just type in LiDAR, um, you can see the different console commands and we'll take the point budget up to 1 million. So yeah, you get to see a little bit more detail there. All right, excellent. We've got that going. Let's jump into the Unreal example file. And you can get that for free on the marketplace. You just search for LiDAR and you'll find this. Uh, this was the previous point cloud plugin that you had to download, but now it's included in Unreal. If you are trying to open this in a newer version, like it'll come down and it'll say, oh, you need 4.24. You might be able to get that to work. What I had to do was I had to export the base LiDAR point cloud, and I'll show you how to do that, and then re-import it into the the new version that you're, that you're using. I'll actually put a link into the updated point cloud. All right, so yeah, here we are in Unreal. Uh, to export, let's hit Control B. Uh, to export, you just right click, go to under Asset Actions and Export, and you can export LAS files. And so I will put a link for the PC demo if you want to try to import this. Uh, what happened when I opened this in 4.27 said that everything was here, but the uh, point cloud looked like it was missing. And that just probably is because Unreal's been improving uh, this uh, algorithm for the point clouds over the last year. All right, so let's take a look at how to visualize the different point clouds. You can see that when you select the point cloud, you can see the appearance here, and you can just visualize it based on color and RGB information. Uh, when you get 
point clouds if you're doing the acquisition yourself. If you're using a standard camera, now you'll get RGB values with all the different points, or you can specify custom values as might be in this case. Here's elevation. You can see there's the color source is set to elevation. And then down here, you can see that you can also set the ramp essentially. There's different programs that allow you to set even like multiple ramps, although I don't know why that would be. You can specify different colors as you, if you want to visualize across height, which is pretty awesome. All right, so just leave that. Here's uh, based on position. And then you can see that we can move under lighting and point clouds can be lit. Here's a dynamic lighting. Also, they can be non-photorealistically lit too. If we get in a little bit close to this, you can see that it's got this sort of a, almost a tune edge to improve the visualization. And this is known as eye dome lighting. In order to get eye dome lighting, you can turn on a a material inside of a post-process volume. So let me just show where to get that. So if you select this, they sort of have a uh, post-process volume parented in here. So yeah, there's the post-process volume. And under post-process materials, in this case, they have the custom pass. I guess two notes from the documentation that I'll, I'll mention. There's two choices. There's two main pass is supposed to be a little bit more efficient. Uh, the other note that they had in the documentation was that when you're doing eye dome lighting or EDL, you probably want to turn off ambient occlusion or at least reduce it to get a better effect. Okay. So, and that looks, I think it looks great. All right, let's scroll over. So here's render shapes here. There's two choices of shape. You have a choice between square and circle. And then, of course, you can choose your point size to see how how large your points should be. And basically, if, uh, with point size, you can dial that up in order to get a better to fill in gaps if you have like a sort of a reduced point cloud budget. Also, with point size, you can visualize it to see how it looks different between circles and um, squares. But in a in addition, with the point cloud budget, there's also a thing called the point cloud bias, which basically tries to modify the point, the size of the of the points based on like where it exists with LODs. So that's what the point cloud bias is for. Yeah, we already talked about setting up collision that it, you can um, and you can apply custom materials. All right, those are the main visualization options. Uh, let's talk a little bit about performance. Basically, you've got a global point cloud budget uh, based on the maximum number of points displayed. And we sort of showed that in the beginning with the console command, we specified 500,000, then a million, and it, it streamed in nicely, right? And that's, according to the documentation, that is like the optimal way to do it versus trying to do a specific point budget for individual point cloud files. And up till now, we're just showing one point cloud. But as we get more advanced, we're gonna be streaming in multiple point clouds and also connecting and editing and setting their center points, but step by step. Basically, yes, shared budget's the most efficient. How it works, it's demanding. It's on-demand streaming, but it doesn't reduce the number, the amount of RAM. For complex scenes, you gotta just definitely test for LOD popping. Uh, if you have like multiple LODs that are in the same scene. Um, the example that's in the documentation I just grabbed is the city of Montreal, and there's like multiple LiDAR files that are connected together. And I'll put in a link if you wanna to try to grab some of that data yourself and try it out. You can see that there's a bunch of different costs per million points, and you can also set frame rate goals. That's also one of the console commands that's um, in Unreal. But also like eventually you are going to be streaming billions and billions of points if you're doing a lot of this, so. That's pretty great. And here are the list of the console commands that's available now in Unreal 4.27. Uh, I just wanted to list the resources here and I'll put those in, these links in the notes below. We've got the Unreal LiDAR point cloud plugin documentation. We've got the console commands I'll paste in below that you can use. Also a couple of point cloud examples. Here's the LAZ and then there's also all of that Canadian uh, LiDAR data. There's a ton. There's some great resources for uh, this laser scanning group and then also the Facebook 3D scanning group also posts a lot. It's not always LiDAR, but it's worth checking both of those out. 
All right, wonderful. So we've gone over setting up the plugin, a little bit about setting up collision on your files, going over the visualization options, and a bit on performance. So wonderful. We've covered a lot. There's a bunch of resources I'll put in the notes below. If you like the video, give it a like and subscribe for more weekly Unreal content. We'll see you in the next video.